Welcome back here at 914. Even though the calendar says it's spring, another chilly week here keeping us indoors when it comes to outdoor gardening. So this morning we want to brighten up the home and bring the colors of spring inside and garden guy Dale Kay joins us now with more. And look at that. Look at all those beautiful colors just bursting around you, Dale. <laughs> Uh, allegedly spring outdoors. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know where it is. And even photojournalist Steve Strom, first thing he says to me this morning, Dale, he kind of ponders it for a second. Dale, spring sure is having a tough time getting here, isn't it? Yeah. I'm just like, yes, Steve, it is. But that does not mean that you can't incorporate a little spring into your home. Quite easy to do. Nothing better than being in, a, in your local greenhouse. It's quite nice in here and definitely very springy. So obtaining color and doing these kind of things is super easy to do. Let's take a look at some of my favorites that not only kind of pop with color, but also have some wonderful fragrance as well. Hydrangeas right now, you'll find them in blues, pinks, and whites. But to have a blue one, you really don't see a lot of blue in the, in the landscape right now. If you look outside, it's very dreary, very gray, very brown outside. And I guess that's really kind of March, right? It's really that transitional month where the weather really doesn't know what it wants to do. And this week will definitely be a testament to that. So having some blue inside your home, really, really a luxurious color. Also chrysanthemums, uh, this particular one is yellow. You'll find them in a range of colors from pinks to whites to uh, mauve colors as well. But one of the most recognizable flowers on the face of the earth and very, very spring-like is the chrysanthemum. Also, uh, pussy willow, you'll find those as cut branches at your favorite florist or local garden shop, but this one is actually potted, so this one will last. You can pop it outside, plant it in the garden. Uh, it'll come back year after year. This one is trained down, and if you want to continue that, all you need to do is prune it to an outward-facing or a downward-facing bud, and it'll kind of keep trailing, but that's kind of a, a long-lived way to, to uh, incorporate spring into your home. Um, hyacinths, we talk about bulbs a lot at this time of year, um, using them outdoors and indoors. But the great thing with hyacinth is you get wonderful fragrance as well. And you can slow these down if they're starting to march away from you or speed up and bloom too quick. If you pop them in a darker, cooler spot, even over um, even overnight or if you're going out for the day, just pop it in the basement and that will actually slow it down. Sunshine and warmth will speed those blooms along. Lavender, another great way not only to get some wonderful blooms in the home, but lavender... The fragrance itself is amazing. And also a little tidbit for you, if you take lavender, put it in a little sachet or a little tea bag and pop that underneath your pillow, you will sleep a lot better, a lot more peaceful sleep. So there you go, lavender, a great uh, thing to use, not only at bedtime, but also in your home as well for, for color. Little mini roses, you can pop those outside in the summer months. Uh, these aren't hardy, but uh, by jingos, they will keep blooming. Even if you give them a little prune back once these are, these are done flowering, they'll kind of keep blooming for you. Jasmine, polyanthem, another great, this is actually a little climbing vine, but that little white flower packs a punch with a beautiful, sweet, syrupy fragrance. It's absolutely, actually, you gotta really gotta get your nose in there to really appreciate what fragrance that has. Azaleas, um, some little pansies, you could pop those on your windowsill and then pop them outside on a nice day. Campanulas are also nice, got those blue tones, Cineraria, pinks and blues. Kind of get a thing, I like the blues. I think when I went around and shopped a little bit, I really like all those blue colors. And then finally, back here we have Gaburas and also Dianthus, which also have a wonderful fragrance as well. Now, if you're longing for a little bit of green grass, or you want a great project you can do with the kids, um, you can simply plant wheat grass or pet grass. It's super easy to germinate. All you need is a little pot which is, I got this little antique kind of patinaed pot. Potting soil goes in. Just put, pat that down a little bit. And then the great thing about wheatgrass is you can plant it super, super, super tight. So you can just almost fill every little nook and cranny here with the wheatgrass. And the other great thing about wheatgrass, it's super bright green, super luxuriant. You can trim it but if you're doing this with the kids or the grandkids it is super fast to germinate and grow so really quickly in about five ten days you'll have what looks like green grass that you can keep inside and have the kids watch it grow back to you i think that's a great idea mm -hmm. instant gratification almost instant <laughs> like that dale instant.
Thank you. We'll just wait for it. All right, thanks, Dale. He's just holding on to that. <laughs> the pansies, I had them outside for a brief while, and, and then they kind of went flopped yeah. over. And I brought them in, they have, have resuscitated. Oh, and they're just going to stay inside. <laughs> Keep them close, Just, uh, just kind of like that <laughs> until okay. it gets warm it's again. Okay. It's going to be okay. <laughs>